Hello guys, good day. This is Anne of Reinforce Speak Love, your fellow positive reinforcer. Today, I am going to share to you the six effective strategies I use to tackle tough days. Just like everybody else in this planet. Just so you know, we do face challenging days when everything feels overwhelming. And it seems like nothing is going right. For different reasons though, it could be due to work stress, personal setbacks, breakups, misunderstanding, or being misunderstood, or it could be because of your hormones, you know, for women. It also happens to me. Or simply an off day for you. This is just your day, you know, your bad day, quote unquote. Learning to manage and solve these bad days is essential for maintaining a good state of mind. While everyone has their unique approach to handling difficult moments, in this episode, I'll share six effective strategies which I personally use to, to, to face these tough times. Just like everyone else, just like you, me, how you manage, how you cope up. I'll just share these tips because this, this aren't just for me. They could work for anyone looking to bounce back from a bad day. Now, look, I am not a perfect person because I do have triggers just like everybody else. It could be stress, it could be people, situation. Unexpe unexpect unexpected happenings which uh, got, get off my nerve or my hormones. You know, my hormones get triggered too. As a woman, you know, women can only understand it. <laughs> or it could be, you know, certain situations which are out of my control, but I'm trying to control it, you know. Those were the days and times wherein I, I need to go back to myself. Now, whenever I get triggered... My pattern is I keep quiet. I keep my mouth shut for a minute or two minutes. I try to really stop the crazy energy inside me. I try to talk a little bit, you know, a little bit, just try to stop myself. And then I bring myself out. I pull myself out from the situation for two to five minutes. Five minutes is needed if I'm totally uh, like bursting with, with anger. I need to pull myself out from the situation, but that wouldn't take long though. I need to pull myself out from the situation so that I can stop myself to start a fight. I am a tiny woman, but I'm, <laughs> I'm such a fighter though. I, I fight like a, there's a, like a street fighter. But I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to be that kind of person anymore. That's the reason why I need to pull out myself into a corner or a room where I can tap my shoulder, tap my body, my tummy, anywhere to divert that crazy energy in me. And then I talk to myself. That's my pattern. Three, you know, three steps. I talk to myself and as I talk, I keep quiet to bring myself into number one, mindfulness, mindfulness and deep breathing like this. You know the way I do that when I'm anxious. I also do this. I need to release the energy, the crazy energy when I'm upset, when I'm anxious. That's what I do in some corner or some room. If I'm really angry, though, I talk to the wall. I, I'd rather give out to the wall rather than, you know, hurting the person. I'd rather cuss the, to the wall rather than to the person. But that only happens uh, rarely this time. But when I was younger, though, it happens a lot that I give out to the wall. This time, I talk to myself. And I... I just need to bring myself, get my act together with mindfulness. Mindfulness doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be somewhere else and meditate. Mindfulness means paying attention to the present moment, which includes your thoughts, feelings, and the world around you. You could also do mindfulness 
uh, through doing your r- routines like journaling, gardening, painting, working out, anything that helps you focus on the present moment, like you are in the now. You know, when you garden, this is not automatic. You have to pull out the weeds. You are there while you're doing the thing. This is not, you know, like what you do in the office that you need to get the paper and sign this and give it to secretary or whatever you do. As the details of the client, everything is automatic. But with mindfulness, it means you you reflect on what the heck is happening in you, your thoughts, your your outburst feelings. And, you know, the world around you, the vibration, the the vibe of the people around you uh, with matching deep breathing. So that's what I do. The number one is practice mindfulness and deep breathing. I do this with my shaking hands when I feel nervous, when I feel upset, or I tap my shoulder with deep breathing. Now, deep breathing can lower your cortisol level and create a sense of calmness. Now, once again, I'm try even though I I avoid the situation of or the person in a in a small period of time, a teeny tiny spirit a period of time, I talk less. And then I come back to the person with sometimes with apology, with explanation. I try to, you know, reconcile to make it up to the person who triggered me. I try to be a good person when I come back after pulling out myself from the situation. So, yeah, as much as possible, I don't want to start a fight, just like everybody else. Peace, man. Peace on earth. Since, uh, you know, I'm, I'm grown up now. There's no sense of fighting for, for this world to be mine. Everybody has the privilege to live the way they want to. That's what I believe. Respect. And the second thing I do to really handle the tough days when I'm really stressed at work. You know, there's a lot of things I cannot control at work. Sometimes I need to let things pass by itself. And I don't want to carry it at home. And even when I wake up, though, it, I still feel the, the bad vibe from what I got from work. Or from somewhere else, it could be from another person or uh, terrible happened, you know, when I I went to this place. I want to get over it. So the second thing that I do is exercise and quote-unquote take a walk strategy. Now physical activity, even short walk, boosts endorphins, you know. Endorphins are the happy hormones in the in the body, the body's natural mood enhancer. So when you, you know, I'm gonna share you my experience when I I actually just walk in the beach uh, on the beach side, you know, an hour ago before sitting down here and you know giving out to you my my th- this episode. So what really happens is when when you walk outside for a short walk, the twenty to thirty minutes because I got a teeny tiny steps. You know, when I walk on the beach side though, I can feel the the breeze, the fresh air, the coldness. I can feel, I can feel the, the goodness of the nature. I can give thanks to God that I'm alive. I have better perspectives coming into my head. And you know, I can feel the, the world my, with my with my senses with on the breeze on my skin i am totally present when i walk on the beach side even when when i work out you know i feel where's the pain the target muscle i am here i am there 100 percent, mind body and soul so that's the point of it i do this activity short walk and exercise it's because this is one way for me to forget about the stress from work, from the past situations, you know, terrible situations that upset me. I bring back my mind in the now. It's like an exercise too in the mind rather than thinking about what's in the past and what's going to stress me out tomorrow because there could be 
uh, you know, it could be there could be an exam tomorrow, a seminar, or an inspection it's for the standards. So I, that's one way for me to bring back my, my body, mind, and spirit, all of my senses, by means of short walk and exercise. Like I'm here, I'm I'm at home, I am present here. So that's the second strategy: exercise and take. A short walk. Number three is this is one of the key point. Focus on what you can control. So I quote unquote say this to myself: focus on what you can control, and focus on what you can control. That is why after getting triggered, it's important to me to reconcile to the person to the other party about what happened so that I can be at ease and so as them, you know, these people. Like, let's stop the fight. Let's let's understand each other. Let's make peace. Let's get into peace. Even, even to the point that I, I must apologize to, you know, for the sake of world peace. Because I am the only one I can control. Even to the point that, you know, I keep giving apology until I'm done, I, I'm gone. <laughs> I can't take it anymore. But as much as possible, though, keep the relationship and the respect. Whether, you know, you like it or not, if whether you, you like the person or not, keep the peace and respect on your relationship. Redirecting your focus or to, to what you can change, like your actions, your responses, and mindset can lead you to a better emotional outcomes. Now, I have personally applied this and it works for me because it doesn't only give peace to the other party. It, you know, it is the pain in my heart that I can go home, you know, after I've really tried to, you know, settle the issue. And all I have to do when I get home is to rest, you know, journal. So that's one way for me to practice mindfulness and reflect what I have learned, what what can I do so that it won't happen again. Focus on what you can control. That's what I say to myself. Focus on what you can control. Now the problem about this is that focus on what I can control. When I encounter those people now, take note. Those people who never take responsibility of their shitty actions. Now, this is the problem. It will also make you feel shitty too. Just like what, what happened to me. So, in some point in my life, I've also encountered those people who never take responsibility of their actions who never apologize, Mr. Right, Mrs. Right, Miss Right. Everything is right for them. Now, again, I've got to remind myself, although I got hurt, I got triggered, and there's nothing I can do about it. Now, let me tell myself again, focus on what you can control. It means that even though I got hurt by this person, I got triggered by this person for whether it's my fault or not. There's nothing I can do about it but to just get over the feeling. Focus on what you can control. You don't need to get an apology to anyone, especially to those people who never take, you know, who, who's never accountable of their own actions, even to the point of, you know, they know already that they, they hurt somebody. These people do exist. I'm not saying that the narcissist, you know, we have all, we all have the, a certain fraction in our personality as being narcissists, but, you know, they're, I'm telling you, people who's not accountable of their actions, they could be the worst one, though, to be with. And since, I got, you know, I got triggered by these people. I just get over my feeling and stay away. I stay away from these people because there's no point in building relationship with this kind of people. 
who always wants to be right, or, you know, no point. There's no give and take, no value. So stay away. So that's the one thing I can control. Focus on what you can control. Now, the fourth strategy. My favorite, rest. Sometimes the best way to handle a tough day is to give yourself a break. My favorite thing, rest or, you know, anything that doesn't require me to think. Maybe scrolling on the phone for like 10 minutes or 25 minutes. Give myself a break not to think. That's also one way for me to not to think, you know, to, to give myself a break. Stop thinking. That's already a rest for me. Scrolling, like entertainment, but not for the entire day, though. That's a different story. So rest. It could be going to the gym and enjoy the spa. Enjoy the, you know, the sauna, the jacuzzi. You know, rest. Come on. Rest your body. Rest and recharge without guilt. You know, to prevent burnout. And that keeps me stronger every time I return to the, you know, to work or wherever is that in, at home. That makes me a better person, stronger and better. Now, the fifth strategy is, of course, this is another key point. Connect with, to, connect to the people whom you can trust. It could be, you know, you could, you could, talk to a friend just like I do you know I talk to you know those people who whom I consider much mature than me smarter than me those people who have encountered the same problems that I have right now like for example like for example I have a problem right now and I, I need different options and how to solve this problem so I talk to those people who have experienced the same experiences before I talk to my dad I talk to some of my colleagues you know this this method you know talk you know call a friend method uh, provide me with a fresh perspectives even emotional support you know social connections are essential for coping with stress offering emotional validation and, you know, get some potential solutions of your problem. So, yeah. Most of the time when I can't take it anymore, I share it to my partner, to my best friend, to my dad, and some of my colleagues whom I consider more mature, smarter than I. So that's the fifth strategy. And lastly, I practice gratitude. Every morning, you know, I have uh, where's my 10 things to be thankful for. It's all written here in this piece of paper. I recite this every day, you know, when I wake up in the morning and before going to bed. I have 10 things to be thankful for. Gratitude. Even though, you know, before I, st I had already stated my gratitude for the day and I go to work and I got stressed out, I still do recite my, you know, the top thing. 10 things I'm thankful for every day. I practice gratitude. It's it's way easier to focus on what's what's what really, you know, what you have rather than the things that you don't have. You know, shifting your focus to things you're grateful for can can change your mindset from nega from negative to positive because you know, when you think about the things that you're happy about you, things that you have, it will make you, f it, it, will, it makes you proud though. It will also make you proud, of course. Like little things. Even, you know, being thankful about this new table that I have from Amazon and uh, being grateful for you know, the work that I have because I can able to buy the things that I want, which I thought it wouldn't happen to me when I was young. You know, my 
we were struggling financially when I was young, when I was a kid. So now it makes sense. So those improvements and the sacrifices of my dad finally made sense. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. And money can't buy that. Those are personal experience. And I'm not the only one who has pers personal experience. You too, the rest of you. So be grateful about the things that you have. It's the good start of the day. Bad days are inevitable though. You know, you'll never know when is your lucky day. It happens to me. It happens to you. It even happens to the saints, to, to Jesus. It happens. But how we respond to them can make all the difference. Remember, you are not alone. Everyone has to face difficult times in some point in our lives so that we can, at least we need, we can grow. It's an opportunity for us to learn. That's why we get better, you and me. With the right approach, you can build resilience and come out stronger, just like I. I am not perfectly stronger, but I get my act together every time I get a chance so that I come back stronger and stronger and stronger, and I do understand. The catch is, this is lifetime. Life is like a school, you know. You and there's no way that you can you're gonna be <laughs> you're gonna be uh what kicked out from this school, life school. But you know this is lifetime. Lifetime learning, lifetime schooling. Nobody can get away from life, so we gotta deal with it. It is what it is. Now I hope you learned something from the episode today. And if you ever love this content, you can follow me in YouTube, Facebook, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, even Amazon Podcasts. Reinforce me, love. And by the way, your fellow positive reinforcer, I do appreciate your time and have a lovely day ahead. Thanks once again.